I could just say, <clears throat> well, Adam Cracknell gets a hat trick. Good for him. But to me, the Adam Cracknell story this year has flown under the radar and most because these guys are crap. These guys. Team's been awful. Adam Cracknell has been fantastic. But for me, the funny part is he was pretty good in Vancouver last year, and then they just gave him up. I'm watching the Vancouver game right now. Brock Besser's debut. So if I'm looking off camera a little bit, it's because they show Besser. Ring number six. Um, but Adam Cracknell uh, was drafted in 2004 uh, by the Calgary Flames with their 10th draft pick of that draft at 279th overall. He was drafted due to his size and his competitiveness, um, according to um, what I read on Wikipedia. So, gotta like the Wikipedia sometimes for certain things, not for everything. Um, <clears throat> so he gets drafted in 2004, spans 0405 with the Kootenai Ice. His point totals dropped with the Kootenai Ice that year. He dropped 48 points in 72 games. 0506, he played again on the Kootenai Ice as an overager, had 93 points in 72 games that year, uh, and then moved up and played for Omaha, which is where. Uh, Calgary had their farm team. Scored a goal and two assists uh, in six games. 06-07, he played for Vegas, which is which was the ECHL team for the Flames. Uh, so the East Coast Hockey League team for the Flames, uh, Las Vegas, scored 22 points in 40, 31 games. And then that was that for that season. So I assume he was hurt or a healthy scratch in the East Coast League. It doesn't tell me. Um, 07 08, he played 61 games for the uh, Las Vegas franchise in the East Coast League, had 59 points, and then played four games with the Quad City Flames. The Flames move their L affiliate seemingly every season. Um, I know I'm in Abbotsford. Uh, four games with Quad City, scored one goal, and that was it. So if you just stop with 07 08, you go. This guy's probably never making the NHL. He's a 10th rounder. Okay. 08 09, he plays Quad City Flames, American Hockey League, the whole season. 79 games, 26 points. So the Flames elect not to sign him. He is signed by the St. Louis Blues. Uh, July 23rd of 2009, he was signed as a free agent by St. Louis. Uh, he played 23 games for St. Louis that year, scored three goals, four assists, seven points. But also played for the Peoria Rivermen, which was St. Louis's um, AHL team at the time. 61 games, 6 goals, 25 points. <clears throat> In 11-12, he only played 2 games for St. Louis. 1 goal. Uh, for Peoria, he played 72 games, 23 goals, 36 assists, 49 points. Um... And in 2012-2013, he played 20 games for St. Louis, 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points, and played 49 games in the minors for Peoria. Again, 33 points in those 49 games. 13-14, he goes to the Chicago Wolves, plays 25 games, or 28 games, 25 points. Uh, 19 games for the Blues, no goals, 2 assists. So, if you stop at 13-14, what you've got is a decent farm hand. For St. Louis, nothing more. So it's one of those tweener guys. Uh, sort of like if, if you're a Vancouver fan, uh, think along the lines of Chapu right now. Chapu's a guy you look at and go, yeah, he's okay. He does his job, but we want a more talented guy. And he likely gets moved out next year. No offense to him, but he likely gets moved out next year. So, uh, Cracknell was signed as a free agent by L.A., uh, July 1st, 2014, but was claimed on waivers by Columbus from L.A. on October 7th, 2014, as Columbus figured that they had room for him in their lineup when L.A. didn't. He plays 17 games for Columbus, has one point, gets sent to the minors, so he cleared waivers that time, uh, 18 point, or eighteen games, 7 points for, uh, for Springfield. <laughs> Then he was traded back to St. Louis by Columbus for future considerations, which means just take him. And uh, Chicago Wolves, he played 22 games, had 13 points. So we're up to the end of 1415. And Adam Cracknell's career, not a whole lot to write about. 
Signed as a free agent by Vancouver August 25th, 2015. So he was a free agent that sat there for 55 days, and then the Canucks went, or 56 days, and then the Canucks went, yeah, we'll take him. Plays 44 games for the Canucks and has 10 points. Um, and then he was claimed on waivers by Edmonton from Vancouver uh, February 29th, 2016. Played eight games for Edmonton um, and then was signed by Dallas as a free agent in 2016. I, I want to preface this by saying that um, Cracknell was a good player for Vancouver. I was kind of surprised he got waived when he did. And this is after... This is after with Cracknell uh, not understanding why the Canucks signed him. When the Canucks signed him, I'm like, what? why? Why in the world would they sign Adam Cracknell? I mean, this guy has never shown anything at an NHL level, and why? Well, with his hat trick last night, Adam Cracknell sit now sits at 10 goals, according to Hockey TV. 15 points, 61 games played. And he's a plus 13. I know a lot of people don't like plus minus, but I'm just saying... He's been a plus player on a team that's playing poorly defensively. Adam Cracknell recently signed an extension with Dallas. Dallas gets it. Dallas understands what they have in Adam Cracknell. The hat trick last night, I'm very, very happy for him. Uh, Adam Cracknell is an inspiration to those guys who are just on that borderline. To your guys like a Jordan Schrader. Just right there. The idea that eventually you can make it. And in his case, when other players would have just gone to Europe, he stayed here. When other players would have thought, you know, maybe it's time I, I don't know, maybe quit the hockey thing and, and you know, get a full-time job and, and maybe take this money I've made in the NHL and, and start my own business. And and I respect players that do that. Cracknell, I respect for not doing that. For saying, no, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. He's 32 years of age. He is at a point in time, and he's made enough money at this point in time, that if he wanted to uh, say, I'm, I'm quitting the game because I'm going to find my own way, and it's not the hockey way right now, um, I would have respected him. But he's played 195 career games now in the NHL, and he's got 42 points, and that's nothing to sneeze at. And uh, <clears throat> one thing with Cracknell's career, and I was looking this up while I had this thing paused, um, he is now, with having played 191 games, he's beyond that 160-game mark. I've always looked at the 160-game mark because I know it affects their pension. At one point, you didn't get any kind of pension until you'd played 160 games. Now it appears that the pension you get after 160 games is like 49 grand a year. Less than 49 games... 149 games, 100, less than 160 games is like 22 grand a year. So that's a huge difference. So I always pay attention when a guy's getting near or beyond that 160 game mark. I don't know if that's still accurate. I've been looking and looking and looking online. I've seen a lot of talk about what was being put into the next bargaining agreement, this last one they just signed. And it seems like where there used to be nothing for guys below 160 games, right now there's 22 grand a year being thrown at guys who played less than 160 games. Or there's a portion played for every 20 games they play in the NHL. I've gone through five or six different sources, and I'm just like, all right, well, it's not a major issue. It's not something that's going to um, cause tons of hits to show up on my channel. It's just one of those little curious things that I pay attention to. Um, Cracknell is a hardworking player. I have no problem with him in Dallas. He almost replaces Colton Sevier. I really, really wish Colton Sevier would have stayed in Dallas. Um, and clearly Florida's not having any better luck this year in Dallas, so if Florida wants to just send Colton Sevier back to Dallas, I'm perfectly fine with that. But uh, a hat trick for a guy like Cracknell is one of those feel-good stories. So I get up this morning and I have a feel-good story with Brock Lesnar. Oh, that's right. I spelled it wrong initially, and I saw it. I didn't have to look at the comments. I looked at the, looked at the title of the video, and I'm like, really, Shannon? You really really did that? You were You were so concerned about writing Lesnar the other guy from Minnesota, that you wrote Lesnar. Anyways, uh, the other feel-good story is is Cracknell. Uh, so I've got a feel-good story on two of my teams that are out of the playoffs. Come on, Boston, pull some kids out of a fire or save a puppy from a tree or um, something. 
Boston's got to give me something to hold on to, you know, because the Islanders, anyways, the Bruins are out. Um, I've talked about who's going to miss the playoffs, apparently, with Boston. So, um, yeah, but for me, Cracknell's a good story, and I'm, I'm glad that he's performing well in Dallas, and I'm glad they've decided to keep him around for a while because he's a useful bottom six guy. I'm still surprised that the Canucks just waved him because it's not like there's a ton of guys in the Canucks lineup who are better than Cracknell right now in that bottom six. Uh, and I, it's not like Adam Cracknell wouldn't be a welcome addition to that bottom six right now for the Canucks. He's, uh, he's a utility guy, and with the addition um, to his contract in Dallas, he should be able to play a lot of games. And again, when I look at these guys who are making 500 grand, 600 grand a year, which sounds like a lot to all of us, sure, but considering what they go through and considering that their job exists for, in some cases, three or four years and then they're done, uh, that's not a lot of money to live on for the rest of your life. And uh, I always am impressed when I see them getting those extra games, getting over those milestones. So now he's got over 160 games. Let's see him get two more seasons in the NHL and build that up. So you know that he's he's able to take care of himself after he's out of the game, save his money properly. That money will last him for a few years. And um, then when retirement rolls around, he's earned it. Um, I think in terms of, of pensions and retirements, um, I respect the guys who ride the buses all the time. I respect the guy who's 31 playing in the American Hockey League and putting it all on the line every night, even though he knows he's probably never going to get called back up to the NHL again. Those are those are players I respect, and those are guys that I, I kind of wish there was more done for them in terms of pensions, but there isn't a way to do it without kind of screwing over the other players. So, you know, um, good on Cracknell. Good on him for getting a hat trick, and uh, I'm really glad to see something good happening for Dallas at a time of the year where uh, they should have been playing important games and they're not. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And uh, I will be discussing the game that is currently on my television um, either during the game or after the game. I don't think I'm, br I'm going to be streaming today, but we'll see what happens. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, it's a... Uh, yeah, Besser's got three minutes of ice time so far. And they've got five minutes left in the period. So, But, as they said, Besser's coming off of a game last night um, in the NCAA tournament that went to double overtime. So you can forgive Besser for not playing a lot of ice time, and you can forgive Willie Desjardins for not giving him a ton of ice time. I'm sure Desjardins went to him and said, how are you feeling? And Besser probably said, I'm still pretty sore from last night. So... You know, it's it's uh, it's going to be a fun end of the season, and I like it when these fun little stories happen. So, thanks for watching.